Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is June the 9th, 2020. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I uh, read an article. In that article, Ryan Garcia, an unbeaten fighter at 135 pounds, lightweight, wants to know why he isn't getting the bigger fights. Right? Understand, this guy's well-connected. He's part of Team Canelo. His trainer is Eddie Reynoso, Canelo's trainer. Right? Understand his promoter, understand his promoter is Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy. Garcia has a deal with the zone. He feels he's ready to step up. Here's the problem. The problem's the division. Right? The best fighter pound for pound at 135 pounds. The lightweight division. One of boxing's glamour divisions. Is Vasily Lomachenko. According to BoxRec.com, number two is Teofimo Lopez. Number three is Gervonta Davis. These are the guys he would have to deal with. Number four is Lee Selby. If you jump down the list a bit, you'll see names like Luke Campbell, Jorge Linares. Right? It's a very tough division. Ryan Garcia, who apparently get some of the highest number of views on Twitter, right? Very few guys get more views than him. I think it's Canelo and maybe one other guy in boxing. He's popular. He's known. He's only 21 years old. Now, let me just say this. He's immensely talented. What I want him to do, what I want fight fans to do to figure out who this guy is, is to go back and look at one of those Holy Grail fighters. Garcia really does remind me of Alexis Arguello, right? Understand, Garcia, 5'10", fighting at 135. Arguello, 5'10", among his three division titles, was a title at 135, right? Both guys are tall for the division. They fight upright. They have explosive, unexpected power. Right? They throw hooks. Hold on one second. Hey, come on. You got to do better. Keep it quiet. Okay? I don't want to even hear mumbling. Okay? Well, let's just say, let's just say that both guys are explosive punchers. Both guys are offensively blessed. Garcia is a combination puncher. When he gets on a roll, it's a two-handed attack. And his opponents hit the canvas hard. He fought a guy named Dunno. Takes him out with the right hand. I know on the replay, put it this way, in real time, it looks like it's his left. On the replay, you'll notice it's a right hand to the temple. And then the left misses him. But Dunno is done. Hits the canvas. His arm is awkward. You could tell it's over. He fought a guy, Fonseca, who actually fought Gervonta Davis. Fonseca made it to the eighth round against Davis. The eighth. Does not make it out of the first round against Ryan Garcia. Unlike the right hand he hits Dunno with. Garcia Hits Fonseca with a left hand. Fonseca hits the canvas hard. It's very hard for fighters early in fights against Garcia to figure out the angles of the punches. They don't know what's coming. They're surprised at how hard the guy hits seemingly without leaning into the punch. In other words... Like Arguello, like Vitaly Klitschko, 
This is a guy who seems to have a lot of muscle in his thighs. Right? Seems to generate a lot of leverage from his lower body. Here's the problem for him. He's been beating guys too quickly. He hasn't been hurt. I don't believe a fighter really knows himself. I don't think a fighter really develops survival skills until he needs them, until he's been hit, until he's been hurt, until he's been tested. This young 21-year-old is just cutting grass right now. He's just lawn mowing the 135-pound division. I completely understand. Some of the people around him saying, hey, you might not be ready for Gavante Davis right now. You might not be ready for Teofimo Lopez. You might not be ready for Vasily Lomachenko. Let me say, too, because Ryan is so offensively blessed, right, and because he likes to have a little bit of space when he throws punches. This is not a six inch puncher. He likes to extend his arms when he throws punches. You wonder what happens if a guy gets inside of his arms and can stay there, right? The Fonseca fight's interesting. It doesn't last that long, but Fonseca comes out with the right idea. He's throwing jabs to Garcia's body. Right? He's trying to chop down the tree. The problem is when you throw a jab to a guy's body, you're naked for a second. And Garcia, excellent timing, two-handed, figures out how to counter him. Now, I get the feeling of Southpaw, Gravante Davis, who could get in the pocket and stay there. Right? Understand, there'd be a height dynamic. Davis is about 5'6". Ryan Garcia is 5'10". A Davis who could get inside and stay there. A Lomachenko who has made a career of getting inside and staying there. Right? That kind of fighter could be a big problem for Ryan Garcia. So let me just close by saying this before I get back to my great life of fatherhood. Let me just close by saying this. This guy is immensely talented. But he needs to put in a few more rounds before he deals with one of the sport's absolute best pound for pound in Lomachenko, one of the sport's better counter punchers, right? The guy who really, in terms of counter punching, reminds one of Floyd Mayweather and that's Teofimo Lopez, or a southpaw like Gervonta Davis who has an extensive amateur pedigree, right? Extensive, understand. Ryan Garcia started boxing early. He's fighting in Tijuana in 2016, right? He jumps into the pro ranks quickly. That didn't give him an opportunity to spend the dozens of fights. In fact, in Gravante Davis's case, it's the couple hundred fights that Davis did as an amateur to learn the sport. Right? So, Ryan Garcia, immensely talented. The hype is warranted. But he's inexperienced right now. I believe his trainer knows this. And he has one of boxing's best trainers. If I'm him, I know at 21 you think, oh, my time's running out. Right? People your age are graduating from college. You're looking up things and you're saying, hey, Wilfred Benitez was a champ by now. Right? All I'm saying to Ryan Garcia is get some rounds in. When you're dropping guys in the first round, right? when you're blowing guys out, when you haven't been hit, you haven't even stumbled, you haven't really been forced to fight on your back foot, when you're that green, even though you're that talented, in my opinion, at least get some rounds 
in before you try to take on Lomachenko, Lopez, Davis, Campbell, Linares, the other guys in the division, Yorkies, Gamboa, right? When this guy arrives, we'll know it. Right now, he looks a little bit too green to me. He's a little bit untested. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you if you feel differently. And I understand this guy has a huge fan base. Then I hope you leave that information in the comment section of this video. Tell us your thoughts. Tell us why, if you feel he can beat Lomachenko or Gravante Davis, tell us why, tell us how he does it. By the way, of course, Lomachenko only one loss to Orlando Salido. Since then, he's been bulletproof. Gavante Davis, no losses. Right? Davis has fought guys like Pedraza. Right? Uh, Liam Walsh. Lomachenko has fought even better than that. Uh, let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.